Hello friends and neighbors, it's September 30th, the last day of VEDS, and we had planned this whole big last day of VEDS blowout with some special guests, but unfortunately that's not going to happen today. We're going to uh, have to delay that for a bit, but that will be happening hopefully pretty soon. Instead, let's talk about Harry Potter. A few days ago, Pottermore made the announcement that all of the welcome emails had been sent out, so everybody who was able to catch the magic quill and get the early entry into Pottermore was in Pottermore. And come the month of October, it will be open to the public, and so I thought before that event occurs, I would give my personal review. The trouble is I'm not sure which intro I should use, because it's not really a book or a movie, it's a website, and I don't really have an intro to that, so uh, I think we're just going to have to make something up. <laughs> It's the internet, the internet. We're gonna review something on the internet. Lots of great stuff on the internet. Becomes a review of the internet. Probably the only review from the internet. <laughs> so the best way that I can think of to describe Pottermore is that it's a combination of a Harry Potter encyclopedia, a social networking site, and an online game. Basically it acts as supplementary material. It takes you through each chapter of the books, but it doesn't show you absolutely everything. It shows you two or three moments. Like Hagrid arriving at Privet Drive, or the catching of the Remember All, or the first Quidditch game. And there's an artist's rendering of each of these moments, and each of these renderings has three places that you can focus on. And so it'll look kind of like rack focus, where you'll focus on this part, but the background will become blurry, and then you'll focus on this part, and the foreground will become blurry. And the artist's rendering look really, really good. Hogwarts and all the sets look really great, and the characters look good, but you can't actually see the characters' faces. They design it so that you can tell who the characters are, like you can see Harry Potter's glasses or Hermione's frizzy hair, but you don't actually see their faces, so it still leaves a certain amount to the imagination. Now the reason why there are so many focus points is because throughout the site there are certain things that you can collect or click on to unlock certain items. And this is where the encyclopedia portion comes in. A lot of these items are extra material that J.K. Rowling has written that didn't make it into the books but still exists in the Harry Potter universe. So for example, for this particular story you get to learn a little bit more about Minerva McGonagall's backstory, you get to learn a little bit more about Ollivander and wand lore and a lot of other fascinating stuff that is really interesting to read but just didn't make it into the story because it wasn't really relevant. And so if you're a big Harry Potter geek like me, this is pretty cool. And it's not so much written like a story, it's written like an encyclopedia entry, but it's still written by J.K. Rowling and you can definitely tell it's still got that distinctive style. And of course the part that everybody talks about, eventually you do become a student at Hogwarts as you are living out Harry's story, which means that you get your own wand and of course you get sorted. Now I said earlier that I was not quite sure how I felt about the sorting hat process because it still felt like you could kind of manipulate it a little bit and I still think there are some flaws in the process. However, what I didn't realize when I said that is that the questions that are asked to you when you are being sorted are different for every person. And I honestly don't know whether the questions are decided based on your answers for the wand lore questions, or how you navigate the site, or if they're just random. But still, they're different for every person, and so it's a little bit harder to manipulate that way. Additionally, as a student at Hogwarts, you get to learn spells, you get to duel with other students, and you get to brew potions in order to get house points. Now these are things that I'm not quite as crazy about because I think the interface is a little bit clumsy and I haven't actually gotten to try out Wizard's Duel yet because it hasn't started working yet. And I realize why it's that way, they're trying to go for realism, but really having to wait 80 minutes for a potion to brew is a little excessive. So in general, I really like the site and I think what I like most about the site is that it's not exclusive to any one type of Harry Potter fan. What I mean by that is everybody's gonna go to this site looking for something different. Some people are gonna go for the game aspect, some people are gonna go for the encyclopedic aspect, some people are gonna go for something else. So if you're there to be a student at Hogwarts, to be sorted and to brew potions and to fight wizards duels and all that sort of thing, then you can ignore all the extra material aspect of it and just play through the game. But if you're there for the encyclopedic nature of the site, then you just focus on that stuff and don't worry about the potion brewing or any of that other stuff. I mean, okay, you still have to get a wand and be sorted before you can move forward, but th those aren't that hard. And I'm not 100% sure about this, but I think even if you don't unlock something within the moment, you can still read the material at the end of the chapter. And I'm fully expecting the site to get better as we go. So far, only the first book has been released, and as the other six are released, I expect them to make improvements, and I expect them to you know, take comments into account and really do what they can to make the site really great for the last book. So that being said, I don't really have a worth rating for this since I don't generally review websites and probably won't ever again, but 
it's worth checking out if you're a big Harry Potter fan. And it's important to note that this site is for the real diehard fans of the books. It's not really a site for people who are just casual readers. It's for people who have been with it from the beginning, who love Harry Potter, and who want to see the Harry Potter fad continue. So if that doesn't sound like you, then you might not get into this site quite as much, but that's okay, because the site isn't for you. It's for people like me. And with that, that about does it for this, the last video of VEDS. If you're still trying to figure out the clues from yesterday's video, I will tell you that there are four separate clues there, there are quite a few red herrings in there, and that one of the clues has already come to pass. Hint, it's this video. So good luck with all of that, and until next time, I will see you tomorrow. No, I did not misspeak. I will see you tomorrow.